Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. A lot of talk about Duke Johnson and what the Browns should do with him. Clearly, they don't like him as much as the fans do. He's had several head coaches and coordinators, and none of them have gone out of their way to use him. Yet the front office has paid him an awful lot of money, and we don't know how many games Kareem Hunt is going to miss. What we do know is that running backs are the easiest position to find. If a starter gets hurt, his replacement will be signed and will play the following week. You can't say that about any other positions. Throw his name out there and see if anybody bites. If more than one does, sell him to the highest bidder. If not, find a way to use him. Bud Shaw is here tonight. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a uh, Tuesday night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into our 23rd consecutive year, and of course, seen exclusively here on Cleveland.com. Exclusively from the IX Center, Steve Ligurski is here, and we've not seen a lot, Steve, a long time. If you want to blame somebody for sports talk in Cleveland, he's one of the originators at WKNR. That's right. Yeah, I was there for a couple years. So. And you didn't hire me, and you had numerous opportunities. I know, I know. I was full. I, it's just like the IX Center with the Autorama show. I'm full, man. I, I got no space. What do you think of the worldwide headquarters of more Love it here. I love the first graphic. My daddy used to work for the Cleveland Press, so that first graphic that you yeah. have is absolutely great memory, man. All right, let's start talking the IX Center and the Piston Power Show. If uh, a piston makes it go, it's in the show. It, it certainly is, Les. So uh, this year we've rethemed the show uh, with the All Star Game coming to Cleveland. What we wanted to do is have all, our All Stars be the cars. So our, you know, rather than having players, our All Stars are the cars this year. All right. What's different this year than any other year? Well, what's different is the show is gigantic once again. Uh, we are completely sold out. The uh, the short the show floor is full on the main floor. Uh, in the South Hall, and we're working with our partners from the Fat Man Invasion. So we've got the Euros, imports, uh, some low riders, some real specialty vehicles that we really haven't had at the show before. A lot of new American muscle cars, really cool stuff. You know, the new Chargers, and uh, we actually have five Lamborghinis back there this no year. Kidding. Yeah, five. When you say big, uh -huh. You have to be big. You're in the IAX Center, for goodness sakes. Well, it, right. Our owner always asks me, Steve, is the show going to get any bigger? And I say, no, Mr. Park, it can't because of uh, you know the size of the, uh, the the building itself. But certainly it's gotten a lot better on the quality side. So we work hard to bring in you know better cars, new cars, and, and stuff for people All to right. see. It's, we're talking about the 15th through the 17th. That's next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Right. March 15th, 16th, and 17th. Uh, show opens at 3 o'clock on Friday, goes till 10 o'clock. Uh, 10 to 10 on Saturday, and then 10 to 6 on Sunday. What's what's the thing everybody wants to see when when they leave the place and they they're thinking about next year? What do they want to see that they just saw? What do they want to see that you di you didn't have, if anything? Well, I don't think that there's anything that we don't have that you know that you, you can't see at the show. But I think this year. Um, you know, the wow factor is all the cars, all the top end uh, um, show cars that we have. I mean, we have some stuff that, you know, when you walk in, you're going to go, oh my God, what, where did this come from and how did it get here? So just really, really great stuff this year. I know at the Ag Center, you've had airplanes in there. You've had, what, what's the biggest thing you'll have in this, this year? Uh, this year, the biggest thing that we have is we have a T-28B. So we actually have an aircraft in the uh, IX Center for the uh, Piston Power Show. Piston makes and goes in the show. I know, it's crazy, right? And then we have uh, all of our military vehicles because we work with the uh, Military Vehicle Preservation Association. So they bring in all kind of military stuff for us. And, you know, that's really uh, part and parcel of what we do. And we partner up with the Cleveland VA this year. Uh, so we're going to be uh, highlighting their prosthetics department this year. So really cool Terrific. stuff. Yeah. Steve Ligurski is with us, the Piston Power Show at the IAC Center, the 15th through the 17th of March. That's next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, you, you mentioned the, the military. You've got military discounts, right? We do. We have a military discount and a first responder discount, and those people can get that discount right at the box office. Uh, they don't have to go uh, get those tickets in advance. Our deepest discount is for our military uh, folks and for our first responders, 15 bucks at the box office for those guys. Are you able to tell, probably when you go over ticket sales electronically you can, but are you able to tell how many 
states people are coming from for this? Uh, no, we really don't get that so much, but I can tell you this from the number of cars that we're getting. We're getting cars from California this year. I got a car coming in from Florida. I got cars coming in from Delaware. So we've got cars coming in from all over the country. So what's, what's the most popular thing? Is it stuff that's moving, stuff that's standing still? Is it stuff that's big, small? What, 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 gather, what gets the biggest crowd? I, I, I think that the, uh, just the, the, the sheer volume of cars that we have on the floor, I think that that's the thing that people really come to see. And it's not just the cars, too, Les. I mean, we have motorcycles. Uh, some of the other autorama shows in the country don't even have motorcycles. We have 110 motorcycles, uh, people competing for our top prizes. What are these people from all over the country who bring their exhibits in. What do, they, what do they say about this show compared to others? Well, the, the one thing that they tell us is this is the best show to come to. This is the easiest show to get in and out of us for our, uh, for our uh, participants. But uh, they just love the, 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 you know, the size of the show and everything that we have on the show floor. It's amazing. You told me how many years it's been. It's unbelievable. It's 53 years for uh, Autorama. It started in 1967. Warren Bookman started it. Uh, back at the old Con Cleveland Convention Center. It ran there till 2005 and then came to the IX Center in 2006. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it really is. What, I mean, for a show to run that many years. What's the ticket price? Tickets are $20 uh, at the box office, uh, discounted tickets at Summit Racing Equipment in Talmadge, uh, discount Drug Mart locations, or you can go to PistonPowerShow.com and buy them online. That's great. That's great. Um, you, f the minute you shut the doors next week, you're, you're working on, on 2020, right? Already got it done. Already got it done, Les. You know me. So <laughs> in 2020, the uh, NCAA basketball oh, uh, yeah. games are going to be here at the uh, Q Arena. Same so, time? Yeah, sort of the same time. Well, we'll actually, we're March 13th, 15th, 13th, 14th, and 15th in 2020. So our theme for 2020 is going to be Motor City Madness. So, you know, with our... With the March Madness, you know, we don't want to get the NCAA double, you know, the NCAA right. involved with this at all. You know, just say it, we're not uh, doing <clears throat> doing anything illegal. We're talking about Detroit. Well, what we're trying to do is promote Cleveland, right? I mean, you know, we want all these people to know that Cleveland's a great destination place right. for people to come to, not only to see the March Madness, but to see the Motor City Madness at the Autorama Show. Okay, you, you talk about it—the the size, the, the the glamour, the glitz, and all that other stuff. What, what's, some, what's something out there that I wouldn't think of, of seeing and all of a sudden either there it is or you're going to tell me where to go? And what, What's a big surprise? I, I think when people walk in and then the, when they first walk into the show, we work with the, the Hot Rodders of Tomorrow. So they have an engine challenge. So you have all these different high school students competing for... Uh, for scholarships, so what they what you end up seeing is people actually disassembling an engine, reassembling an engine in about three minutes. I mean, stuff that you normally wouldn't see at any other type of show like that. But you know, we're always looking for that interactive aspect of the show, and you know, and, and particularly with the kids. I mean, I was telling you about our student career day. Uh, our student career day last year we had 800 students. This year we have 1,200 students no coming to career day. Yeah, it's really cool. Terrific. Hey, as always, thank you very much Less again. Piston Power Show coming up. Uh, a week from uh, a week from Friday, there you see it, March 15th through the 17th at the IX Center. Kids uh, 12 and under get in absolutely free, and you can go to the website at uh, PistonPowerShow.com. Steve, keep it going another 50 years or I'm so. I'm going to try. Can you do that? I sure can. Thanks for coming All on. All right, man. Thanks. Best of luck with it. Thank you. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Uh, Bud Shaw is here. We'll talk uh, combine. We'll talk draft. We'll talk anything on your mind. Uh, Cavaliers uh, and Indians, whatever you want. We've got it with Bud Shaw from WKYC.com. And we'll come back in a moment. Bud will join us with his open uh, opening comment. You can follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash More Sports and Less Levine with new content posted each and every day. More Sports and Less Levine continues in a moment. Brought to you exclusively on Cleveland.com. The heart-pounding, fast-breaking action of college basketball is back when the 2019 Mid-American Conference Basketball Tournament returns to the queue March 13th through the 16th, presented by Visit Myrtle Beach. Pulses will rise and hearts will race as the men and women of the MAC put it all on the line. Tickets for the MAC tournament are on sale now at the Q box office, online at thequeuearena.com, and at all Northern Ohio discount drug marts. MAC Tournament Basketball, be there. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine.
It's the best of the best, Cleveland. All-star cars, hot rods, and motorcycles at the 2019 Summit Racing Equipment IX Piston Powered Autorama. March 15th, 16th, and 17th at the IX Center. If a piston makes it go, it's in this all-star show. Featuring motorcycles, antique trucks, insane hot rods in the asylum, tractors, military vehicles, along with all-star themed car clubs on display. New this year is Fat Man's Invasion with Euro Imports, Sport Compacts, Lowriders, and more. PistonPowerShow.com for details. Kids 12 and under are free. Discount tickets on sale now at select discount drug mark locations and Summit Racing Equipment in Talmadge. Let's check out uh, birthdays for today. Del Crandall, a catcher with the Milwaukee uh, Braves back in the day. Debutante, a beautiful woman, 1947. Michael Irvin born on this day. Paul Canerco, who just, I don't think he ever got a hit against any other team. He got all his hits against the Indians. Wally Zerbiak, uh, former Cavalier. And Joe Buck's favorite guy, that's uh, Kyle Schwarber, all born on this day. Let's take a look at this date in sports history. And uh, we can tell you that uh, back in 1997, Tommy Lasorda, Nellie Fox of the White Sox, and Willie Wells of the Negro League were elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Less than the third person thinks it's the worst class ever. Bud Shaw's whether you agree or disagree with that. Well, if Lasorda was in it, I agree. I was <laughs> never a big fan of Lasorda. But he did win two, I know, two uh, I know. Uh, World Series titles. I think my issue with him is that I covered uh, the San Diego Padres for uh, a few years and right. used to go up to those games. And in the post-game buffet, or the post-game press conference, he would turn it into a, the post-game buffet. And just and sit he would there, prop his legs up on with, the table? Yeah, with eating Italian food and spitting on all the media. So. <laughs> Needed a, However, a he bib had, to cover Tommy Lasorda. He had some of the great outtakes of, of yelling at the reporters and, yes. and pitchers, by the yes, way. Yes, he did. And Kurt I Bilacqua. mean, he wasn't much of a player, so, right? I mean, no, I that, think, he, so pitched that was four, all, I think yeah. he pitched in four games. So that was all managerial, right? How about the line drive when he was coaching third base in the All-Star game and the line drive almost hit him? Do you think he was faking it? or? I wouldn't he, doubt it. Did he keel over? Yeah, I would. <laughs> I would never say that he did that on purpose. No, of course not. What's new? Not much. Just uh, post-combine, uh, uh, I would like to say excitement, but that's not yeah. the right word. Hey, before we get into that, I want yeah. to thank the people at uh, uh, BW3, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings out in uh, Warrensville Heights. We had a great turnout today. Brad Sellers was with us, Andy Baskin, Aaron Goldhammer, and uh, uh, Adam the Bull. We had a terrific time, and you'll be able to see that, an hour of that, tomorrow night right here on cleveland.com did so. you ever consider going with less the lion something like that like adam the bull less the, oh less the leopard no okay i was not thinking of that but What's when you ad- first saw him didn't you say of course that's adam the bull yeah yeah he's kind of a uh he was a stocky strong looking yeah. guy does a nice job he does a good job two two one six five seven five oh four oh three all right I didn't even know the con the, that the uh, Come that the on, combine. Les. Don't play dumb on this. You have mock drafts right underneath the desk in this drawer. In my basement. Where's the drawer? There is no <laughs> drawer. We, if we had a drawer, yeah, we probably would, have would do that. You would have them. I mean, is it because the uh, Browns di- don't need a quarterback that nobody really cared that much? And okay, it's going to yeah, be a well, lineman. Let's move on. I think it's two things. I think it's that they don't need a quarterback and that they're drafting 17th instead of top right. five. Exactly. You know, it used to be top five. You could look and say, uh, this is a guy that they should take. This is the guy they shouldn't take, you know. Right. Now, 17. it's so hard to even have that argument because you don't know who's going to be available down there. Does it concern you that Metcalf doesn't know if he's related to Eric Metcalf or not. <laughs> Somebody tweeted me already and said, oh, God, could this be another Metcalf up the middle oh, if that's they draft him? That's old. Right? That's, that's way um, gone. So, I, you know, they could come away from this draft with a, with a wide receiver, I think. I well, don't expect yeah. they'll do it in the first round, but I, I do think that they'll look for, especially if Rashad Perriman doesn't right. sign with them, because they're going to look for a guy – that sort of has some of his same qualities. You know, he's a bigger, right. more physical receiver, and that's what this offense needs. Do you by any chance have an opening comment for us tonight? I, I think I could do one, maybe ad-lib. Ad-lib it. Here's uh, an opening comment, the not-so-opening comment with Bud Shaw. All right, thanks, Liz. Another NFL scouting combine has concluded, and it's fair to ask, what did teams learn beyond whether some players would prefer to be a cat or a dog? <laughs> Seriously, that's a question occasionally asked of draft prospects. The Browns were credited 
Yeah. If that's the right no, term. No, no, they weren't credited. They with, did it. With recently asking a prospect how many uses he could come up with for a paper clip. This year should have been easier for the Browns. Keep it simple and just ask what they can bring to a defense that needs help. Coincidentally, defense is the strength of this draft, starting with the defensive line where John Dorsey wants to get longer and improve the pass rush up the middle. The Browns don't have to go reaching for a quarterback to save them or for answers to crazy questions. They have a GM who can evaluate talent, and their biggest need matches the strength of the draft. Life is good. I'm thinking when it comes to them in the draft, you ought to say, we're good. We don't, we don't need... We don't need anybody? We don't need your stinking pick. <laughs> so I could make the Browns if I just say, yeah, but I don't know if you're aware of this, but I'm doing a movie and I brought a clip. <laughs> That could help you. You know, what? Some, one of the teams, I got to say, one of the teams asked a prospect a few years ago uh, where, if he were on a bus in Alaska going 100 miles an hour down a mountain, what, where would he sit? <laughs> I mean, that was a question asked of a guy. And I'm what thinking, they, what are they looking for there? I guess I it, if it, I would say, well, it, since it's in Alaska, I would be sitting near the heater. But <laughs> I don't know what they were looking for. Front of the bus, back of the bus. Uh, well, don't they ask about their mothers and their there aunts? Been, and yeah, their... there have been a, a couple of really Shouldn't those guys too be fired personal in questions that, that guys have asked over the years. But, you know, uh, Kirk Barton was an offensive lineman for the Ohio State for Ohio State. And he's the one who talked about getting that question early about the, the cat or the dog. And he said... He didn't know what to say because generally you would pick dog, but what if the cat's a tiger? You know, <laughs> you'd pick the tiger. So he right. got. And Cam if you didn't Newton, explain that, it would be a bad choice. If you said, by the way, it could be a lion. And or a Cam tiger. Newton, I think, off, off set the whole thing off by just saying, "I prefer to think of myself as a human." And then they moved on. <laughs> so when you're a Cam Newton, you could give him an answer like that and get away with it. Devin and Concord, uh, dog or cat? Uh. Got to go dog. <laughs> yeah, do you guys what if it's a chihuahua? Do dog? <laughs> Come on. What's right? on your mind tonight? Oh, I tell you. I, are well, you tell on us. the fence with Michael Brantley going bye-bye and bringing back your boy Santana? <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, Who's boy Santana? You heard me. Who, Bud's or mine? You. My, my friend last year. You were always I'm okay up. with Santana, but I wouldn't have done an even trade for Brantley. I would have done an even trade Mar Marwin Gonzalez for Brantley. That, that I would have done. <laughs> What's the reasoning be be behind getting rid of your best outfielder yeah. who hits over Well, they didn't get rid of him. He got rid of them. They getting the same money. No, but they did he wanted out. You can't blame the Indians on that. I mean, if you're simple uh. dollars and cents, you can, but obviously... I mean, you got a good, you got a choice to go to um, uh, you got a choice to go to Houston, or you have um, Luplo in the outfield. Just yeah. just using I'm an not, example. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think you could get nine major league outfielders in one room and have and not and not have one of them be better than what they have. I know the wording bad. wasn't right there. But that's that's what I meant. Yeah. You know. It's funny, it reminds me of a line, you know, you remember the great Sam Weish? Yeah. You know, he, he was a great, you know, the guy actually wasn't a bad coach. He, had, mm -hmm. he was just nuts. But he had a great line. Uh, they had a microphone on him, and he's storming up and down the sidelines. Joe Montana's just ringing him up, scoring left and right. And he talks to, to the coaches, and he's talking to them on the microphone. And he goes, do you have anybody? I don't care if they're bad. Just anybody to get in there. <laughs> Just get a body because out there. Monta you know, I mean, yeah. right now we have nobody. I thought, I thought the only thing Weiss ever said is you don't live in Cleveland. Hey, you know, he came back and, and took some, uh, he got dunked in the dunk yeah. tank, so I'll give him credit for that. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I mean, that is, All right, so hold know, on I'm, a second. You said, you said your piece. Now I'll ask you this. Where, where in the division, the... Uh, uh, Central Division, where do you think the Indians will finish, as constituted right now? Well, it's a pitching staff. I mean, I don't see them not winning it. Well, I think that's what the Indians are thinking, right? And then well, wait, yeah, wait till I mean, the trade deadline? Obviously, there are bigger stakes. But, I mean, they just clearly were trying to clear payroll. And, I, you know, we had um, uh, Mike Chernoff at uh, 
at the uh, Tribe Fest. Um, uh, at Channel 3 had a booth there, and we were interviewing some people, and we got him. And, and what he said to me, and listen, I, this is what they're going to say because they know the fan base is not very happy. But what he said was that if everybody had left, if they had kept everybody who left, right, at the salaries they signed for on the open market, their payroll would have been near $200 million. And I, I think that's a – I understand that that's probably factual, but it's also no fan is asking them to keep everybody that left. Um, no, but they're bothered. Jan Gomes is a bothersome situation. Well, Encarnacion. I yeah. mean, they gave up so much offense at first base that I think they felt the need to bring in Santana to fill that. Right, right. But the outfield is now. You know, you're gonna you're gonna hope that Leonis Martin and Jake Bowers and uh, Tyler Nichols, Brad, Bradley Chisenhall. Zimmer, and those guys all no, have their best seasons. No, he's he's hurt now too, isn't he? Who is Chisenhall? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lower uh, lower leg. I wonder what that means. Yeah, it's that damn calf again, right? Yeah. Hey, don't blame me. I, I didn't diagnose it. <laughs> you mention it all the time, though. I diagnosed Lindor's, but but not uh, Chisenhall's. Hey, so all jokes aside, did you watch one minute of NFL Network scouting combine? Did I? No. You? Uh, I did anything? not. I did not. I, I read about it, but I didn't watch it. I, I wouldn't know what to look for, would you? I mean, I mean, it, like, what? Really, they're just running around in shorts. It's just, it's, it's. I, I, I mean, do, I understand why they do I, it. I just, it I do not. have a suggestion. If if you got Metcalf or some of these other guys, the running backs, wide receivers, you can put them in the kind of uniforms they had them in. But if you're a 375 pound lineman, you you have to walk away from that without putting those uniforms on. What do you want them to wear? <laughs> well, there's right. got to be. Something a little more flattering. Burlap? <laughs> Burlap, perhaps. Uh, you know, listen, I don't mind. You know, I understand if you have all those guys together that you want to be able to compare them in some way. So you put them all through the same drills and you can look and say, well, this guy's a better athlete than the next guy. But I think we, some, some organizations get in trouble when they just start changing their opinion of what they saw on tape based on what they saw at the combine. Don't you want to see what they did in games? Wouldn't well, I'm sure they do. They use, they use this as a supplement. And, and all things being equal, an Ohio State guy versus somebody else, you play in front of 100,000 people every week, that gives you an edge over somebody who plays in front of 18,000 people. No, exactly. I mean, really? You know, less. Can, can, yeah, I mean, yeah. can you handle the pressure? So you yeah. wouldn't have taken Khalil Mack, huh, that's, Wes? That's not the – we're not – I said uh, all yeah, things being a, equal. I said all things – Farmer said. No it up. Playing from Buffalo on this team. <laughs> <laughs> I just go by the, the best Buckeye available. That's what they ought to do. I know I know. you can't go wrong there. Unless they're talking he's quarterback. Be gone <laughs> at number one. Yeah. All right, we got to go, Devin. Good, all right, guys. Good to talk to you. Teams all are right. looking at uh, Duke Johnson, though. And, and I don't understand the fascination to try to get rid of them. No, I, I wouldn't. Listen, where they are right now, unless John Dorsey has some inside information that Kareem Hunt's going to miss two games and not eight. Right. Or uh, ten. I don't know why you would. And, and no one. Listen, this is predicated on nobody blowing them away in a trade. Now, I mean, he's a third-round draft pick to begin he, with. Yep. Nobody's going to walk in here and say, if they go, we'll give you a first or second for no. Duke Johnson. Okay, then I would trade him also. But and they're we, not going to. And when we come back, we'll take a look at what uh, certain teams have gotten for running backs, which All is right. not a lot. Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing. Catch the excitement of live harness racing Monday through Wednesday as well as Saturday evenings with the 6 p.m. post time. Open early every day for simulcast action for the top thoroughbred and harness tracks all around the world. It's free admission. It's free parking every day at Northfield Park. We'll come back in a moment. We'll uh, take a look at the Duke Johnson situation and more. One line's open, 216-575-0403. More continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Your basement is damp, dirty, and not somewhere you want to spend time. Let Nature Stone Flooring transform your basement into a true extension of your home. Nature Stone's proprietary hydrostatic ports allow water to simply evaporate, so no mold or mildew. Plus, it has a higher insulation rating than carpet and is warmer than linoleum, vinyl, wood, or tile. Schedule your free in-home estimate easily online today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone is the affordable basement floor solution that beautifies your home. Nature Stone, the only concrete solution. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, 
Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions, original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. But it's uh, time for a How Come Quickie. How come the most important part of March Madness is in April? Very quick. Very quick. Had one yesterday. How come uh, most of spring training is in winter? Also. Who, may, who gets to make names that are wrong? I don't Who's, know. Who comes up with these How Come Quickies? Why, are they better is lately? It, is it a service that you use? <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, it is. Do you, do you pay people for the contributions? If the, by the uh, by the quickie. All right. Yeah. Two one six five seven five. We do get paid for uh, per phone call. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. Bud Shaw with us uh, tomorrow night. We'll uh, show you what happened out at BW three in Warrensville Heights. It was a great time this morning, and uh, you'll get to take a look at that. Then uh, the D man Dennis Maniloff returns uh, with us on uh, on Thursday. And by the way, I'm taking a well-deserved vacation on uh, next week. Excellent. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was But I won't be here next week. 216-575-0403. We mentioned Duke Johnson and some teams are interested. Let's take a look at what we're, uh, what we're looking at or what the Browns are looking at. So uh, this is what uh, has been gleaned by running backs. 2010, the Bills trade Marshawn Lynch to the Seahawks. They get a 2011 fourth-round pick and a 2012 fifth-round pick. That doesn't seem like a lot, does it? That for, paid off. For a more accomplished uh, running back. Than Duke but Johnson. how about this one? The Browns trade Trent Richardson to the Colts, and they get the 2014 first-round pick. That was the best get by any team for a running back. That was uh, uh, Chuck Pagano being famously quoted calling Trent Richardson a rolling ball of butcher knives. <laughs> 2017, the Dolphins trade Jay Ajayi to the Eagles. I didn't pronounce that right, but they received the 2018 fourth round pick. So there you see it, and the Browns traded Carlos Hyde, although nobody thought that was a great deal getting him in the first place, right? And they get a uh, fifth round pick in exchange for that. Yeah, I mean, clearly there was, that was part of the dysfunction, I think, of this organization where uh, the front office wanted to clear the path for Chubb, who wasn't getting his enough, enough carries under Todd Haley and Hugh Jackson. In 2018, the Packers trade Ty Montgomery to the Ravens. They get a 2020 seventh round pick. How about that, a seventh round pick? You have no idea where that's going to be in the draft because uh, it's so far away. But the point is, teams don't. Teams rarely take running backs that high, and teams rarely trade for running backs that high. Yeah, and the great running backs aren't made available via trade. So. That was my biggest issue with this is that he's a guy who, you know, carried the ball only 40 times last year, but I think in all uh, had over 650 yards between uh, receiving and, and running from scrimmage, scored three touchdowns as a receiver. He's very valuable on third downs, and I don't think you're going to get the right value back in a deal. Why is it that the fans like him more than – because I think fans and... see him, you know, for the longest time, now it's a little different, but for the longest time fans saw him as one, as maybe one of two playmakers on offense, and right. he still wasn't getting the ball. Uh, his, his carries were, uh, you know, a four-year low last year. Um, yeah, he the, had one game where he had nine, car nine touches. Yeah, so I don't think he's – well, Ch if Chubb and Hunt are – uh, are sharing the the load. He's not going to get very many carries, but I do think he's a, he's a really valuable uh, third down guy. And again, nobody's going to walk up to you and say we'll give you a second or first rounder for Duke Johnson right now. If they do, then I I would consider that deal too. Let's take a look at our Facebook question. See what's going on on, on your mind. What do you think the Browns could get for Duke Johnson? It's our question of the day. Angelo Casanza says a third and a fifth at best. 
I believe that would be at best. Peter J. Butler, I don't think, uh, uh, well, what do you think? Wouldn't think? He wouldn't think it'd be any more than a fourth yeah. be due to his contract and salary. I, and I, I get that. I don't think it would be either. I think it would be a fourth or fifth. Continue on. Harold St. John says... Uh, he was a third, so a third in return, or a player, but I, that doesn't, that's not always the way it works. No, it doesn't. Now we can go to Wayne uh, Richard Lyons. Hopefully this not being discussed makes no sense to trade him. Will Hunt be around for game nine, maybe? Why uh, even think about trading Johnson? It would be a bad move. And if they did, maybe a third rounder. What they don't need is uh, another pick. Keep him. You know, it's another, uh, it's another point is that they're already having about 11 draft picks again in this draft. Yeah. Heidi K says uh, that they're, uh, they're not going to get rid of him by not knowing the outcome of the Kareem Hunt situation. They could probably get a receiver. I don't know. Seems more valuable than, than that. Just get a nondescript receiver, and, yeah. unless you had somebody in mind. And here's another vote for keeping him, which I would agree with. Yeah, I, I think for some reason he's he's become one of the most popular. Obviously, uh, Baker Mayfield's your most popular guy, but for some reason Duke Johnson, it, it, and it, you almost get the feel it's the second-string quarterback holding the clipboard with Duke Johnson. Well, in a way you do because more than one regime has now um, taken this guy told the fan base that it's going to use him more, uh, that he's been underused, and nobody has figured out a way to get him enough touches to, to really use his, his skills. Does it bother you that they don't, or do you yeah, think that's contrived? Yeah, and, and, I, and I start to think it might, maybe it's him, right? It can't yeah. be them all the time. Maybe, it, no, it's four maybe or five there's different something guys. about him that they don't, that either in practice during the week or in game situations that they don't like what he does. But... He seems to be a pretty dependable receiver when he's in, uh, in th when, and, when they have third and eight. And they paid him. Yeah, yeah. They paid I, him four and five million dollars. Great point. Yeah. I mean, they've also not this regime, but the, you know, the, the Browns also paid Jamie Collins, and now yeah, they're trying they to get out of that. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. And uh, Kareem Hunt is on everybody's minds. John Dorsey talked about him. When we get back, we'll listen to what he said. The Piston Power Show, we had Steve Ligurski out here talking about that. And it's the, uh, it's, it's the best of the best. It's all-star vehicles at the 2019 Summit Racing Equipment IX Piston Power Autorama coming up next week, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, March 15th, 16th, and 17th. That's at the IX Center all weekend long. You don't want to miss the motorcycles, the antique, uh, the antique trucks, the insane hot rods, and the asylum, the tractors, the military vehicles, and much more. If a piston makes it go, it's in this show. Military and first responders discounts are available at the IX Center box office. But Sean and I return in a moment. More sports and less living seen exclusively on cleveland.com. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. It takes Smiley One heating and cooling to bring the heat when things get chilly. Find us at 440-449-HEAT. We had done our research with regards to Kareem, and we thought at the appropriate time of all the information that we did have 
um, listening to his story, listening to how truly remorseful he was with regards to the egregious act that, that transpired, knowing that once he comes here, there is no guarantees, but what he's going to do is he's going to earn your respect and everybody's respect within the Cleveland Browns organization by his actions and not his words. And I've always lived this, is at the end of the day, if a player can leave not only as a good player, but a better person at the end of the day, you've done your job and that's what we're attempting to do here. So right now, I'm, I'm, I feel really comfortable with this signing. John Dorsey talking about Kareem Hunt. And Andy uh, Baskin made a good point today, I thought, that when you hear guys showing remorse, the first reaction is to not believe them. Apparently that's not John Dorsey's first reaction. No, but most people, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's the other way around. What? Oh, I mean, listen, I... I Don't you wonder if the, the guy really, 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 really means it? I mean, he... he uh, he was in Kansas City talking with reporters after this happened. Um, he certainly didn't own it then, maybe because he also had known it to his own organization. Right. Um, the, the remorse followed the, the release of the video. And I'm not saying that it, that means it, it's uh, fake, but from an outsider standpoint, yeah, I would look at it that way. Listen, I understand the Dorsey who knows him, who drafted him, um, but this kind this notion that you know, they're doing it only to help him become uh, a better no, person is just, you know. Does anybody believe that? I think that? we all know better than that. That's I all. mean, listen, John Dorsey's a, a religious man, so I've, I've heard say because of that he, he does mean that. But if Kareem Hunt wasn't a good football player, would he, would he feel that way? No. No, certainly not. You, wouldn't, you, you probably wouldn't sign him. You wouldn't have him taken up a roster spot. You wouldn't be waiting for the, the, the league to determine... Uh, whether he's going to be suspended and for how long. And by the so way, these are all done because the guy has value to the Cleveland Browns, and and it looks from the outside like they have favored, you know, value over, over yeah, uh, I mean, character and and from a football standpoint, clearly he makes them a better team. Sure. Yeah, there's no. I mean, based on what we saw when he came in here last year to play against right. the Browns. Looked like the best player on the field. I, we, we've talked about this for a couple of weeks, but in, in talking to people who know, and you and I were not professionals at this, are we professionals in anything? No. Okay. No. But if we were, um, the fact that, you know, you, you hear some people say, well, he's from Cleveland and he's home and that'll be better. I'm not so sure in his case. Well, one of the concerns about him in Kansas City was, and the Chiefs, uh, I'm told by people out there, uh, tried to get him to not come back to Cleveland. Um, Just since, to visit. Since this is where the, yeah, during the, uh, during the offseason, yeah. they wanted him to stay in, in, in Kansas City um, because this is where the incident happened, and this is where his family and friends are. And if you haven't had a chance to read um, sort of his personal background and some of the uh, things that people in his family have been um, have been involved in over the years, then you, you might not understand what they mean by that. But um, we'll see. I mean, it's not always the best thing to be back around the guys that you can't say yeah. no to at times. Yeah, yeah you grew up with them. It, it, it is kind of tough. What, what do you do, though, if you're the, um, the Cleveland Browns who... I, I, I don't, I, the league makes a mistake here by not making a decision and letting... The, the Browns or any other team know exactly what they're up against? Well, they're not finished with their investigation, we would can only surmise, right? Because um, they haven't handed down a punishment yet. I said that I would like to see the league tell teams when somebody's on the inactive or commissioner's list or whatever you want to call it, you cannot sign them until a suspension right. has been handed down. It's hard to believe they, that that rule's um, in effect. It doesn't happen all the time because... You know, as we saw with Josh Gordon, he was already under contract to right. the Cleveland Browns. So that, that took that temptation away from other teams to go offer him something and then claim that you're only offering him something. He has to earn everything that you're going to give him. And once a guy with that kind of talent is in the building, then it becomes easier, I think, to sort yeah. of make these allowances. Like, is he doing everything? Is he, is, he said he would, and he's not really. He's not going to get on the field until he does? Is that real? I mean, if Nick Chubb gets hurt... What and, do we Kareem, do? and Kareem is, uh, Hunt is there. Is he not going to get on the mm -hmm. field if he isn't doing everything they say? Uh, that's hard to believe. Yeah. Let's go to BP and Pepper Pike, who we haven't seen since this morning. Hello, BP. Hey, Lance and Bud. How are you guys doing? Hey, how are doing you? Doing well. 
Good. First of all, Les, it was a really nice event today, so congratulations. It was a job well done. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming out. The food could have been slightly better, but that's the topic for another day. The eggs were a little runny. <laughs> I, uh, He'll they, take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk to the catering uh, division on that. Yes, we will. But, but you know, it's, nobody, it, fan, it's like certain you know, restaurants, really, nobody goes for the food. <laughs> no, no, yeah. They're just going for the bagels. Right. Well, yeah, come on. But it was a great event, and it really was. Uh, I really enjoyed talking with Brad Sellers. Um, he just, you know, you forget all the history he's been part of. Yeah. But, you know, he was teammates with Michael Jordan for at least yeah. probably three or four seasons Absolutely. with the Bulls. And, I mean, he had some amazing stories and an amazing insight. So, again, it was really a great event. Thank you. And what's on your mind tonight? Regarding, uh, you know, it just gives me a lot of pleasure to see the Cavs actually have a better record in the last 10 games than both the Celtics and the Lakers. <laughs> it's hard to believe. I mean, they're not trying to lose games, that being the Lakers and the Celtics. They're trying to win games, and they're doing the opposite. And it's really – I mean, I, I stayed up late last night to watch the Cavs – I mean, watch I'm sorry, the Lakers lose to the Clippers, and it was really hard to believe. I mean, they're basically out of the playoffs on March 4th. Tell me what happened uh, with Kuzma. Did he sort of push LeBron to get into a defensive position? What happened yeah, on that? I, I heard about I it, but I didn't actually, see it. Yeah, I didn't see that part. Um, I didn't see every second of the game. I kind of fast-forwarded because the Lakers were really down for most of the fourth quarter. They were down by 10 and 8. Right. And it really almost was a blowout. All right, so let, so let me, I didn't see that part, but, I've, I mean, it just mm – -hmm. Let me it's ask. It's hard to believe how really, and that LeBron really made a huge mistake. I mean, yeah. Let me he ask you both. Overestimated, you know, me, the talent that the Lakers have, but he also underestimated how powerful the Western Conference. Yeah. Is. Yeah. All right. Let me ask you both. Are we seeing the beginning of the end of LeBron? Well, I'll, I'll take that one first. I right, mean, I, I don't know what that definition would be. Um, is he a top ten player in the league? Sure. Absolutely. I, is I he top five? Yeah. Listen. My, I don't think this changes his legacy missing the playoffs out there for a year. I really don't. But what it does do, I think, is make him as a leader out there harder to sell to these yeah. young guys. And, you know, his, his dog, he's dogging it so much on defense right now that I don't blame Kuzma if he did push him in the general direction of an opponent because that seems to be what it takes yeah. right now. And he, for him to stand there and say that these guys don't understand what it takes to, to make the playoffs and – and put that kind of performance on the court defensively is such a uh, con you know, contradiction that I could see that having some lasting effect. Whether or not they, they uh, believe that he's responsible for all the trade rumors about Anthony Davis and, and the willingness of the organization to give up young players. BP, how about you? Is it the beginning of the end? Uh, well, I mean, I obviously it's closer so. to the unless end than they, it is to the beginning. The, unless the Lakers somehow get... Anthony Davis this summer and Kyrie Irving. I think it's the beginning of the end for LeBron. And I, yeah, I think that's I, a good think, point, BP. I, I mean, think, they, you know, mm -hmm. they could still try to swing a deal for Anthony Davis and and Kyrie Irving. I think he's you know, making his you know working on his exit plan out of Boston. I don't even. I actually think Boston. I don't really know all the how you know the contracts work, but I almost. I don't know, maybe they would sign Kyrie Irving and then trade him, but I don't see how it's going to work long-term in Boston with those young guys in Boston. And Kyrie Irving now is pulling his diva uh, yes. routine yeah. again, and it looks like he's doing it in Boston. Yeah. yeah. Kyrie is uh, uh, hes not a second fiddle skill-wise, but leadership-wise, personality-wise, the kind of guy the, team, the teammates rally around, he's a third fiddle. Yeah. Hey, uh, BP, thanks for coming this morning. Thanks for calling. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, guys. 216-575-0403. When we get back, the, uh, we'll talk the Indians, and uh, we will do that. Terry Francona uh, speaks about Mike Clevenger and uh, much, much more. And we'll take a break and come on back. Sokolowski's University Inn, the winner of the James Beard Foundation Award three years ago. Only five restaurants in the country get it each and every year. No place better than Mike and Bernie Sokolowski's University Inn, Cleveland's oldest family-owned and operated restaurant. And on Friday, this coming Friday, from uh, 11 until 2, Dan Coglin uh, will be signing his books. He's, he's had four of them, all very enjoyable, and he'll be there. Uh, you can buy the books. You can get his autograph and talk and laugh with Danny Coglin, one of the great legends in Cleveland media. We'll come back in a moment with Bud Shaw, another legend. We'll take a break exclusively on Cleveland.com.
The concrete in your garage is uneven, cracked, pitted, and just plain ugly. Transform your garage into a welcoming entryway with Nature Stone flooring. Reduce tracked in dirt, eliminate puddling and salt damage. Plus, Nature Stone corrects uneven concrete so you don't have to worry about tripping or slipping. Call or go to naturestone.com to schedule your free in-home estimate today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone is the affordable garage floor solution that beautifies your home. Nature Stone, the only concrete solution. It's the best of the best, Cleveland. All-Star cars, hot rods, and motorcycles at the 2019 Summit Racing Equipment IX Piston-Powered Autorama. March 15th, 16th, and 17th at the IX Center. If a piston makes it go, it's in this all-star show. Featuring motorcycles, antique trucks, insane hot rods in the asylum, tractors, military vehicles, along with all-star themed car clubs on display. New this year is Fat Man's Invasion with Euro Imports, Sport Compacts, Lowriders, and more. PistonPowerShow.com for details. Kids 12 and under are free. Discount tickets on sale now at select discount drug mart locations and Summit Racing Equipment in Talmadge. He's preparing for a long year of, you know, that's, and, and it doesn't mean you work any less hard. It just, I mean, you can do it a little different. You know, he, he's come out of the shoot like it's game seven of the World Series some springs, which we understand. This year with he, Carrasco and Kluber, we've tried to keep them on sim games until they get to the 50 pitch mark just to, keep an eye on the intensity and things like that. And then once they get to 50, then we get them in games and start to build them up. Well, uh, that, of course, uh, Terry Francona talking about Mike Clevenger, who started with the Indians in 2016 when he appeared in 17 games, a 3-3 three three record. And there you see the numbers, 5.26 uh, ERA. 2017-27 games with a 12-6 record, 3.11 three, uh, 3 ERA. Then 2018-32 games. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, 13 and 8 record, uh, 302 ERA, 207 uh, strikeouts. How about that versus yeah. 67 walks? That's a huge difference compared to the previous two seasons. Yeah. You know. And and uh, he takes takes the ball every uh, fifth day. Yeah, as two to one ratio strikeouts to walks in those first two years, and it was much better. Uh, much better last year. It shows he's got more command. Do you think uh, the Indians front office and, and Francona um, uh, are in a hurry to get the Southfield situation resolved and won't give guys as much time as maybe they need? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think because it's, it's bound to change a little bit when Zimmer gets healthy. Um, I, I, I don't think they want to overtax Martin at this point. So I think he may still keep uh, kind of a slower pace to spring training. I think he feels like he's got a lot of different options out there now, and there's going to well, be yeah, if he's going to be eight guys, and he's going to be platooning guys against yeah. you know lefties and righties. So um, I think it's going to be something that that fleshes itself out over the first month or two of the season. I'm, I'm surprised when I see these national guys just <coughs> excuse me almost automatically put the Indians as the winner in the Central Division, and I look at it with this outfield. I, I know the starting pitching is tremendous. But when I look at the outfield, I say, how can that compete in the, in, with the big boys? Well, the big boys aren't in the AL Central. That helps. All right. Um, and I think if you were sitting in Minnesota, Kansas City, or Chicago doing the same very show, you would probably be like, how can this team end up trying to win a division with their, with their players and well, their Minnesota pitching Well, Minnesota has no pitching. That, yeah, that's their number pitching one. staffs. Minnesota's but they've, they've signed lineup some guys, is though. fine, is, is, is pretty, pretty impressive. But I still think when you're trotting these – I don't want to say five yet, but these four guys out there in in Kluber, Bauer, Carrasco, Clevenger, Bieber, we haven't yeah. even talked about. You should win this division. And then who knows? I, I have an idea how to solve the uh, one of baseball's problems. What is that? At the All-Star break, the, you, the Indians trade their whole starting pitching staff to Minnesota for their offense. You know... And, <laughs> 
There's a reason you why like it, don't you? There's a reason why you haven't gotten any calls from the Indians, <laughs> from the Dolans asking you to join the front office. I, now I don't understand why the Browns haven't tried to hire you for that, a clock that, management. Yeah, I'm starting but, to give up that that hope no. and, and dream. Um, but how, how how do you feel about my idea of two a split season, 81 games, you play 81 games and you start over. You, that the team that wins it gets gets to the playoffs what, somehow. So then some you way. have a first half and a second half. Yes. Huh. Why do you want, what, what don't you like about the current format? I, I don't like it, but I think um, the millennials more, might. And we teams would have that renewed chance again. Yeah, at, you have another mid-summer. opening day on July first. Bring in. Thirty-seven thousand people. Well, if you do that, are you going to move the trade deadline? Because right when you turn over the season and say we're starting anew, and a month later everybody starts trading off their best I, players. I have not, like many. Maybe good that ide- would present them from doing it. Like many good ideas, I haven't totally <laughs> thought this out at this point. Well, there's time. There there's is at time. least ten minutes left in this show. There's well, <laughs> yeah, and one of them's, one of them is going to be used up with me talking about <laughs> Northfield Park here, home for live and simulcast racing. You can uh, get the excitement of uh, Harness Racing Monday through Wednesday and Saturday evenings at the 6 p.m. post time. Open early every day at noon for simulcast action from the top thoroughbred and harness tracks all around the world. All weekend long, you've got uh, free handicapping contests, including the popular Road to the Derby on Sundays. Free admission, free parking every day at Northfield Park. But Sean and I return one more time exclusively on Cleveland.com. When my dad started Nature Stone, he created a solution for age-old concrete problems unevenness, cracking, pitting, and more. NatureStone solves all of these problems in garages, basements, and outdoor spaces. NatureStone is beautiful, environmentally friendly, and affordable. Plus, NatureStone is backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Call or go to naturestone.com to schedule your free in-home estimate today and get up to 50% off. NatureStone, the only concrete solution. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Here you go, tape show tomorrow night from Buffalo Wild Wings in, uh, on Harvard Road in Warrensville Heights. Brad Sellers, Andy Baskin, Aaron Goldhammer, and Adam the Bull. Uh, uh, BP from Be- Pepper Pike said it was a good show and hopefully you'll be, uh, you'll be able to watch it and enjoy it tomorrow night. We do the show live from 6 to 7 Eastern time and then you can uh, catch it all day long on cleveland.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Facebook uh, slash more sports and less Levine with new content. Each, uh, posted each and every day. So uh, this date in Les Levine history. <laughs> March 5th, 1959, spring training begins at Chavez Levine Wiffle Ball Stadium in Les's backyard. Les has hopes of breaking the all-time home run record at Chavez Levine of 5,793. I told you that's, I, I don't even care what the words say. When that yeah. picture's up there, that's, the, that's the, a, my you're, favorite you're, haircut. <laughs> It just reminds me. You know, Ellie from Brook Park has never it, called in about that. It just haircut. makes me want to hit a lob wedge. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that is deep grass. It is. There's no question about that. Uh, Cleveland Bill says, uh, "Hi, Bud. Hi, Les. The Browns should keep Duke, Duke Johnson and then uh, primarily draft defense next month." Last year, the Browns were 30th in net yards permitted, 28th in rushing yards, 21st in points allowed. Baker and company won't be able to outscore everybody. Yeah, I, I think that's where they're, they're have real concern now. There were, I think, the Ravens almost had 300 yards rushing against yeah. them in the last game, and maybe that's well, skewed, they didn't know how to solve the quarterback. That skewed situation. the numbers a little bit, but yeah. you know, the curious thing about the Ravens, 
they did not franchise C.J. Mosley, who's been an all-pro right. linebacker for, I, has, for the six has years. Has Cleveland in signed him yet illegally? Um, the, I don't think uh, Eric Weddle is coming back to them, and 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 uh, Suggs may not. And that, those are three pretty big parts of a defense that was really good last year. Is would you like Mosley? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the, uh, you know, it's hard to say again how much money a guy like that might get on the open market. Um, if you if you go on, you're trying to get out of a big contract with Jamie Collins, um, you know, maybe you don't want to get into another big one, but he's certainly a guy that I think uh, they could and should pursue. The draft supposedly is not great at linebacker. It's one of the real thin uh, position groups in the in the draft. And this would seem to me to be a chance to improve a uh, kind of a vulnerable spot in their defense with a guy who's already proven. Yeah. Are you starting to sense that Brownstown is back? Yeah, you know, I, I know I've mentioned it a few times on this show, you know, and getting here in 91, I, I, I missed the 80s. I wasn't here yeah. for it. I came in from out of town to cover a few games, so I understood, you know, what the passion was all about. But people have told me you know there's nothing like Cleveland when yeah. that team is is fighting for a uh, playoff position and I just thought I would see it somewhere <laughs> somewhere yeah. in the mid 90s you may be seeing it uh, soon. and then I thought I might see it again in uh, in the early 2000s when Butch Davis was here and um, one panic attack later uh, that <laughs> that chance went out the window let's go back to the phones let's go to go to a dick who's in Dayton Ohio dick good evening hey how are you doing how are you guys doing good, doing dick. well dick how are you I'm sick of this winter weather. I can't wait till the Indians, uh, you know, start their uh, their season. I'm looking for them to win that division, and hopefully they go to the playoffs and maybe bring home the World Series. Well, you got March 28th, the opening uh, opening games against the vaunted uh, Minnesota uh, Minnesota Twins. Yeah, the only way they can get the Indians to uh, make them feel like they're going to be playing in warmer climes in Cleveland is to have them open the season in Minnesota, huh? No question about it. I, and, and by the way, I didn't know this till last night when uh, uh, when when we did the show last night, and that is that the final series of the season. You know who they play? Minnesota, Philadelphia. Uh, Really? That's a bad, bad no. timing. You should never, <laughs> should never finish the season with a. I, I know you, you have Ag to uh, against a team that just signed Bryce Harper. With yeah. that, <laughs> that and uh, yeah, that and interleague play on the last series. Yeah. I, I don't like it. Well, I I'll think wait, the the division I'll will be wrapped up by that. Matt and uh, Matt and you know uh, what's his name, Hammy and uh, Jim Rosenhaus. Yeah. They're the best, you know. Yeah, they do a terrific job. Thanks, Dick. Enjoy the night. Okay, have good, a good day. Good to talk to you. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to think that we're, especially on a day like today when it's 16 degrees out, that right. we're, you know, two, three weeks away from opening the season. And you know. the All-Star game probably won't have snow. <laughs> so we got that going for How us. How early in July is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I think we're safe. It'll there. be the second opening day on the second half of the season <laughs> in July. I'm going to get that one through. I know. Ram it through one Congress. of your ideas is going to come home to roost, that's for sure. <laughs> That'll do it for us tonight. Great job, as always, by uh, Bud Shaw, and you can follow him on, uh, on WKYC.com. And, and by the way, you got me in. On yes, uh, one of the, one of the uh, you said it contributors yeah. uh, mentioned uh, – um, that I had told a story on WKYC about CC Sabathia, and they referenced uh, the line you had when we yeah. when he showed up at spring training, 300 weighing close to 300 pounds. Right. Your line was it should be uh, known as CCC Sabathia for those who understand the Roman. There you go, the Roman numerals. Yes. All right, that'll do it for us. Thanks to Bud Shaw. We got that tape show tomorrow night from Buffalo Wild Wings. I'll be back on Thursday with the D-man Dennis Manilov. And uh, we thank Bud for uh, joining us. We will see you uh, tomorrow and Thursday. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent.